So this is where we look at nodes, the new material system that has been integrated into Cinema 4D R20. Only work with the standard and physical render in Cinema 4D at this point. They don't work with Pro Render currently. So nodes have been in existence in various other types of 3D software for quite some time now and Cinema 4D has, has joined the rest of them and we now have nodal materials within Cinema. Now if I just go over here to create you can see that we've got our standard material that we're used to, the PBR material that you'd use for the physically based rendering in um, Radeon Pro Render and of course we now have two sets of things here. We have a new node material and a new Uber material. So if you're like me and you've never really gone anywhere near node editing for textures before, then this is a whole new experience. And hopefully over the sort of coming months, I'll get my head into this a bit more and I can do some tutorials for those of you out there that are like me who haven't really gone anywhere near it. So the new node material is quite simple in its creation so there isn't an awful lot um, in there and it brings up our new node editor okay so this is going to be the type of thing that you guys are going to need to go away and play with so it's a whole new ball game it's a whole new window um, a variety of different things of group nodes ungroup nodes this which will increase and decrease the amount of visibility of the nodes and stuff in there so it's got a really nice feel to it um, it feels like a nice modern but very familiar interface for things like Cinema 4D. As you can see we've got our layout here so we've got various elements that plug into various things in here and over here on our asset system we've got lots of useful nodes in there that you're going to need to use to plug into your material system to get the sort of thing that you want. So I can just drag and drop a checkerboard one in there and I can just then attach that say for example the alpha and you can see that my material updates and I've now got an alpha channel integrated into this. So we have a nice search function here if there is anything in particular that you want to look for or just have a, a wander through and see what you've got. Car paint material I know this one is going to be quite popular. Um, we've got the um, sort of sparkles shader in there so that we can get this more realistic reflection refraction of, of different metallic car paint features which is going to be a really big thing for a lot of people that I know have been wanting this in Cinema 4D for a long time. And then again I can just select my main one and you've got your interface here. Now you can use the node editor in one way or if you're used to working with this sort of thing then you can use these little um, potentially squircles but the little node interface here and you can connect to a node and you can look through them that way so maybe I wanted to add in a Voronoi noise or something like that and it will update at the moment I am just pressing buttons as I'm I'm not too sure about using the node editor but it is quite simple in its layout and hopefully you guys are gonna roll with this in a much quicker way than I am in this little demo now for those of you who want a sort of softer introduction then perhaps this might be better for you which is the new Uber material which looks in its own right a little bit more like our familiar territory of Cinema 4D's material but we've lost some of the channels. Uh, color is gone because it technically doesn't exist um, in physically based rendering and we have the diffuse there. We've also got reflection. We now have uh, a coating which is a bit like adding a lacquer over the top of things so it's slightly different from reflection. Emission which is you know making stuff luminance. Transparency so making an object transparent so glass things like that something that you can see that has angles of refraction. Opacity now that is not transparency but it's more like alpha so actually removing parts of the image instead and then our ones that we know our bump map our normal map and our displacement. So as before you need to just you know put a tick in the box to say this is what I want to use um, and you can work your way like we've been sort of doing over the past however many years of Cinema 4D or you have the option of adding in a node here so if you wanted to connect you know maybe an existing node that you already had in there or perhaps maybe just simple color 
things like that then you can do it that way. If you've got an image then you can load texture and then you can pick an image and that will then put that into here uh, which I might just do now. So let's load a texture on my desktop training Cinema 4D logo so we can just plump that straight in and now if I look, see we've got the selections, different interpolations and blur and so on and so forth but I can now click to my node editor and I can see how that has started to build that up instead. So it's quite nice the fact that you can flip between the two so you can start to build materials the way that you would normally and then you can look a little bit deeper under the hood and go into the node materials to see how things work. It certainly is a real godsend, so I don't know if you're like me, where you'll have had something in a bump channel, and you've gone, okay, well, I'm going to use, I don't know, let's go for a generator, I think we've got some noise in there, haven't we? So basic noise, and then you pipe that same thing into the diffuse channel, or then color, and then when you have to change one, you have to change the other. But the joy of this node editor, you see, is that I can now utilize the same node and I can stick that result into the coating or the diffuse. That's probably why I've had that issue up there, isn't it? I was on the wrong channel. So I could stick that on the color, and therefore I'm now getting the color through the same, and I only have to change one value, and it will change both the bump that it's doing and the diffuse channel. Just gonna kill that one there. So you can just remove connection, and it will stop that link. So I know this is quite a big thing for a lot of people who've been waiting a long time for this in Cinema 4D and it's finally here. I hope you guys enjoy playing around with it. I know that there are some great little presets here. So under the node, um, under the node material we've got things like car paint and gold and they're all specifically sort of tweaked to work with things in that they are named after to help the process along. So you can increase and decrease the number of flakes, the density and the scale, and that will change quite dramatically, um, you know, depending on what you've got, and means that we've got some nice, decent flake shader within Cinema 4D. So go away, have a play at some of the, the nodal-based stuff and see if you can get your head around it. I will be doing the same over the coming months and I'll try and do some more tutorials on it for you when I get more involved with it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe or check out blog.maxon.co.uk